we consider our work to be what's called university assisted community school work. Um, broadly how universities are thinking about leveraging their resources to respond to public school needs. Um, so we're really excited about that work. We get to lift up this data plus work as one example um, and we hope to learn from and with folks across the state and the region um, and then develop, consolidate our coalition and then develop a really strong strategy for moving forward. Well I feel like it's a more positive um, perspective. Um, sometimes when I hear about people talking about the area that we're serving, you get a lot of words like um, underfunded, like low on resources. Um, but what we're trying to do is to focus on what's already there. Um, we want to use the assets that already exist on the ground and lift them up rather than focusing on what the community lacks. We've had um, other administrators, other community leaders reach out to us asking for a template that they can use on their community. And one thing I'm particularly interested in regarding to this project is creating that empty template that other students, other groups, other community leaders can use to fill in and support their own communities based on what we're pioneering here at Durham. In the kind of community school and university assisted community school world or network, um, we're sharing with one another, right? Um, and this database is unique. Um, and so we're able to share this database with colleagues um, from Philadelphia, from University of Central Florida, um, and folks are really interested in replicating this for their community schools, and in, in particular, um, thinking about how data science and creating a data visualization dashboard like this um, can be a really rich resource for folks on the ground in the schools. Um, and then the last thing uh, that's really neat is um, we are, so for our, for our year-long Bass Connections academic research team, it's really important that we root our students in Durham um, and, and that they understand Durham outside of the context of their, the walls of their institutions. Um, and so this dashboard actually very recently led um, each of our 20 students on a scavenger hunt. Um, and so they walked from, we, we started in one neighborhood where we walked from uh, one elementary school to a high school to another elementary school and then in another total different part of town did a, a very similar thing and created a scavenger hunt that had them use the dashboard to identify number of free and reduced lunch at certain schools, what sort of assets they, they noticed in the neighborhood and to take pictures of those assets um, and then what we'll do is we'll come back together and we'll compare notes around how one different one neighborhood looks different from the other. In our project, we have a lot of representatives from DPS as administrators sort of overseeing us and monitoring what we're doing, as well as providing resources and just a, a guiding hand from local communities. Um, I feel like Duke can sometimes be removed from the surrounding communities that it's a part of, um, and it's really good to have that influence within our project just so we have an outside perspective. I think our next step is like how we build a movement for someone to see their teaching learning research service um, through the lens of public school communities. Um, and we really, really need to like think robustly um, and interdisciplinarily um, inside and outside schools of education, right? So it's real easy to think about like we want to add capacity to public schools and so we want to think about tutors entering or mentors entering public schools. It's another thing to think about where engineers can create irrigation systems for community gardens or where natural science courses can study the mold on classroom ceilings to figure out why kids have asthma or where um, law schools can support immigration paperwork and employment paperwork for community schools and community school um, families. And so that's, we're in the beginning of that process right now. And a dream would be that um, a public school or a community school is saying XYZ need came out of our asset needs assessment and we know these local institutions and we know who to contact from those local institutions and the work that can actually like build capacity and support our, our families. Well, obviously I want to continue working with this project as, as you know it is an iterative thing year by year so it's something I could stick around in. Um, we have past members that are still floating around helping us even as they're like starting their own careers. One of the things that's really important for this project and all projects is that A there's continuity and B that there's room for development and growth right um, and so um, you know this project is is really a year-round project we have a group of, of students from both Duke and North Carolina Central that are thinking about this work through the academic year and then we have a smaller group of students from both institutions um, that are working on kind of the technical aspect and the data visualization coding etc during the summer months 
Um, and historically, there's been a kind of what we call transition document where, you know, the larger group will hand it off to the more technical group for the summer and vice versa. Um, what's really cool about this year is that um, we found some funding to um, bring on two of our Data Plus students onto our um, kind of vast connection structure, which is our year-long academic research team. Um, and so what it means is that we will be able to continue working on the technical aspect of the work throughout the course of the entire year. Bringing people onto our kind of vast connections year-long uh, research structure can look a, a multitude of different ways. Um, most students are earning academic credit for their fall semester and spring semester, which means they're meeting weekly, they get an independent study credit, they get, if they're Duke students, they get a research code. If they're North Carolina Central student, they're getting honors distinction, they're getting community service hours. Um, and we've, we've also started to identify some paid opportunities for students to, to do this work who aren't interested in the academic, or, or the academic credit option to earn, to earn money um, to support the work throughout the course of the year.